Your execution on the donkey of the day is something to behold. Is it a read? He gave me donkey of the day and I deserve it. People need to know. Well, need... you need to tell them. Charlie, I am. you have the voice. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. It's time for donkey of the day. It's a read, <laughs> but you're so good at it. You're trying to be a fake-ass Charlemagne. There's only one Charlemagne in the world. Charlemagne. Damn, Charlemagne. Who you giving donkey of the day to now? Well, Sexy Red, Donkey today for Monday, February 26th isn't going to a particular person or individual. I'm casting a wide net, okay? It's just going to a false narrative that is being spread by people and individuals on social media. And I have to say in regards, uh, I have to say networks like MSNBC too. Not the whole of MSNBC, but I've seen a, a couple of articles on MSNBC blogs that have also pushed this false narrative we are about to discuss. And this weekend, I was home and I woke up Saturday morning to a few people I highly respect and they sent me some comments from Stephanie Rule's MSNBC show, The 11th Hour. I've been on Stephanie's show before. I know Stephanie. Uh, all love and respect. I enjoy the program. She had a sister on there named Dr. Christina Greer, who was a political scientist at Fordham University. And they were discussing Trump sneakers. Okay, the lower third said Trump hawks sneakers in bid to attract young voters. And Dr. Christina Greer was speaking to that. And then uh, Stephanie Rule interjected and brought up myself and the good brother Killer Mike's name. Why? I don't know. And then Dr. Christina Greer went off. Let's listen. We've had water, we've had steaks, we've had ties. Okay, we've had universities, but then why don't I NFTs. hear from the Charlemagne the God or the killer mics out there saying, hold on. Because they need to read a book and or talk <gasps> to a political scientist. Oh my God. Right? These are people who have massive platforms. And Huge they are, influence they have over young massive people. Massive influence over not just young people, but black men in particular. They are the ones who are parroting Russian propaganda, what? things that you can find easily on Facebook, <gasps> sort of saying, well, neither one does anything. So, you know, I don't know if you want to stay home, that's up to you. They refuse to lay out what, how far this train can go off the track, right? How far Donald Trump can take us away from democratic ideals. This country is not perfect. Every black person knows that, mm. right? But incrementally, we have to actually work towards the ideals. We can't have people consistently telling young people, well, if you sit this one out, I don't think it'll make a difference because, you know, Joe Biden hasn't done anything for your community. Absolutely not. Mm. I mean, we know that having debt relief for people who have gone to college, that actually closes the wealth gap, mm. right? So African-Americans can actually start to buy houses. I mean, the list goes on and on. So when you have people like Killer Mike and Charlamagne the God, I think they are actually real dangerous threats to democracy. <gasps> wow, Dr. Christina Grimm, myself and Killer Mike are threats to democracy. We parrot Russian propaganda. We tell black people not to vote. We refuse to lay out how, how far this train can go off the tracks, how far away Donald Trump can take us from Democrat ideas I mean man with all due respect everything she said about killer Mike and myself is a complete lie and her lie wasn't intentional she didn't go on the 11th hour and say I'm gonna lie on Charlemagne and killer Mike her lie is based on false information her lie is based off false narrative false narratives that she might see on Facebook see when you see a false narrative on social media and you don't do any independent research to see if what is being said is true and then you go on a platform and repeat that false narrative you are helping to push that lie I know it's not intentional Dr. Christina Greer is just a victim of false information like so many of us are it, get, it gets brought to my attention the lies a lot of black political pundits speak on social media and in their group chats about myself. I'm fully aware of who says what. Black people in the political space on social media who love Master Biden and the Democrats so much and they hate any critique of him. So they have all these things to say about myself in a killer mic. Listen, I don't have any problem with you disagreeing with us, but don't lie on us. All right? Don't say we pushing Russian propaganda and telling folks not to vote. And please don't say I'm not willing to tell folks how far Trump can take us from Democratic ideals i don't even have to talk let's just run the receipts because this is what i really want to get to this is me earlier this year on piers morgan all the way in the uk piers asked me about joe biden's you ain't black comments if you don't know whether to vote for me or trump you ain't black and this was my answer when he asked me about that i think what he was trying to say is simply you know if you vote for donald trump as a black person you may be voting against your own interests and what do you think about that as far as what do I think about what? About what you just said, about what people may have thought Biden meant. Do you think that is true? Do you think you're voting against your own interests oh. as a black American if you vote for Trump? Yes, I do. Because, you know, I feel like, you know, Donald Trump is a, a threat to democracy. And, um, you know, when you talk about a, a country that could be leaning toward fascism because you have people in a party that are leaning toward fascism, you know, as a black person or any minority, I don't think, you know, you would want to live under a fascist regime. 
And, you know, that's not something that, you know, it doesn't matter what your money, how much money you have or, you know, what your status is. You know, if you're a person of color or a minority under a fascist regime, regime, I don't think that's going to fare too well for you. Let, let's go to when I was on Who's Talking to Chris Wallace on CNN. He asked me a simple question. What do I think of Donald Trump? Listen. What do you think of Donald Trump? I think Donald Trump is a fascist who does not care about democracy in any way, shape or form. So you think it would be dangerous? for the country if he were to get back on the White House? I think, I think, that is, I think that's an understatement, you know? And I think that's also the, the pickle that we as, as American people are in, right? I think that it's three options in 2024. You have Donald Trump, who's the criminal. You have uh, Joe Biden, who represents the cowards, because I think the Democratic Party are cowards. They don't fight enough. And you got the couch. And I think, you know, the couch is voter apathy. And I think a lot of people are going to choose uh, to, to, to stay home in 2024. And that, that, should, that should scare us. The one time that people should absolutely positively be terrified and be afraid of what could happen to democracy is next year. Oh, the MAGA bots are getting information in my comments right now. Now, listen, am I clear yet? Because I'm consistent. I'm going to play one more. This is me when I was on This Week uh, on ABC with Jonathan Carl. And Jonathan, he too asked me about Donald Trump. Listen. This is the first time in my life when people say things like, you know, uh, this person is a threat to democracy. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely true. And it's mind boggling to me that, you know, nobody is taking it as serious as I feel like they should. Like we watched an attempted coup of this country happen on January 6th. And everybody's acting like it was just a bunch of people, you know, wilding at, at spring break, you know, down in Florida. Yeah. Like we literally watched, you know, people try to th overthrow the government because they didn't like the results of an election led by a, a, a former, you know, president. If that doesn't cause a sense of urgency in people, I don't know what will. Is that the Russian propaganda Dr. Christina Greer is speaking about? Does that sound like someone telling people not to vote? Listen, I'm not even mad at Dr. Christina Greer because I understand how this happens. And this is what I want to say this morning. Fox News does a phenomenal job of pushing the narrative they want out there. For example, if I'm in an interview and I say President Biden is an uninspiring candidate with no man character energy, if I get on this air and I ask a question, is the Biden-Harris administration a ticket that can win in November? Because based off the low approval ratings, the low poll numbers, the fact Trump has 91 criminal charges, the fact Trump is a wannabe dictator, but poll show he still might win a general election if i ask are they a ticket that can still win or if i say you know which i have i think biden should step aside for the good or good of the party because he himself said there's 50 other people in the democratic party who could beat trump when i say those things in the conversation fox will take those clips and turn them into stories they constantly push the narrative they want out there to the American people because using those clips reinforces the narrative they are pushing that black people are off Biden. If you ask me, I personally believe what my guy Tim Ryan believes and that there is an exhausted majority of people in America. It's not about race, gender, sexuality, none, sexuality, none of that. OK, it's just a bunch of us who are tired of it all. But I don't want to get sidetracked. Fox News does a phenomenal job of taking from these interviews what they want to push their narrative. Why doesn't the left do the same? There's not one interview where I don't warn America about the dangers of a second Trump presidency, but instead of amplifying those things, y'all follow the leader, Fox News. That is y'all daddy, because they are the cable news leaders, okay? Y'all make y'all commentary about the headlines they create in regards to what I said. SaluteTheMediaite.com, Colby Hall, that's my guy. Colby wrote a fantastic article once about me discussing how Fox News only highlights my criticism of Biden, but never about Trump. And by the way, my Biden commentary is not rooted in whether or not he's done things for black people or not. Have I expressed those things before? Yes. But in this season, I'm asking a simple question. Is Biden-Harris still a winnable ticket? I'm not saying nothing David Axelrod hasn't said. I'm not saying nothing Ezra Klein hasn't said, but y'all black political scientists and pundits, y'all don't call them threats to democracy. Why? Because they white men. You know, that's why. OK, <laughs> I, I, I truly believe y'all not mad about what I'm saying. Y'all just mad as me saying it. I'm the hip hop radio personality with no college degree, no political experience. What does he know? The rapper Killer Mike is just a rapper. OK, the, the rapper Killer Mike and the hip hop radio personality shouldn't be the one saying these things. And you know what? I feel so bad for Mike because Mike not even saying nothing. OK, mm -hmm. <laughs> this time last year, I was in the studio with Killer Mike and our beautiful black wives and our good brother Lil Duval. And we was listening to the album that would go on to win rap album of the year.
here at the Grammys. Michael, okay, and Killer Mike said back then he was focusing on local politics in Atlanta and, and, and in Georgia, and he was focusing on his music. He don't want to talk politics, but the, but the left gets so caught up in the conservative narrative that they took from Mike's two times. He's spoken about politics over the last 30 days. Mike said on Bill Maher, Maher he didn't want to endorse anyone, okay? So they brought it back up on The View. Can I play just a little bit of what Mike said on Bill Maher before we get out of here? Play, play what he I, said. I still like the policy that the old man had that I was supporting. Bernie Sanders. I would encourage people to find who's supporting that policy and, and see what... Uh, Mike says, I supported Bernie Sanders. You should support the candidate most in line with progressive policies, the person who's more prone to work with progressives. He said on The View... I supported Keisha Lance Bottoms, who worked for the Biden administration. And I supported all these other Democrats in Georgia. And he named him. And he says, you should follow and support the candidate they are supporting. If I'm Bill Maher, if I'm Sonny on The View, I'm looking at the camera and saying, oh, that would be Joe Biden. This is why Fox News wins, because conservatives are just better at messaging. They put the narratives they want out there, and then the left debates and fights about Fox News narratives instead of simply creating their own. So it makes me wonder... Who y'all working for? Because y'all hear us saying these things about Trump. You hear where we pushing people, but y'all don't amplify that. Y'all amplify our criticism of Biden. So who's really pushing propaganda? Please give all these folks pushing these false narratives about Killer Mike and myself the biggest he huh? Mm. All right. Listen, black people, I promise you uh, that you can criticize Democrats and still, you know, vote for them if you choose. You can criticize any elected official, Democrat or Republican, and still support them and vote for them if you choose. Okay? And don't let nobody tell you otherwise. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey today. It should not have took 15 minutes. <laughs> I, had, I needed to get that out. I'm not. I needed, 16. I needed to lay it all out. So if there was ever any confusion from anybody, they can just go listen to that. <laughs> That's okay. All. That's all. All right. And stop lying. Donkey Today is sponsored by renowned personal injury attorney Michael the Bull Lamisoff. Don't be a donkey when you need a fighter on your side. If you're ever injured, go to MichaelTheBull.com. That's MichaelTheBull.com. And when you mess with the bull, you get the horns. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.